Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, you ever lose a pen? Got a sob story you want to share in the comments? Please feel free to leave one down below. Luckily, I found mine. So, let's dive into it. From left to right, we have a Rexall monogram, a Pelican M800, and these first two pens actually have to do with a viewer question from last week's pens in use. A Sailor 1911 ringless, Mobile 82, which I thought would be empty this week, and I'd be on to another pen to be my daily writer, but for reasons, it's not. Waterman's Ideal 52, Senator Silver Fox, because I think I'm going to try to rename it. I'll have to make a new card for it. Senator Crack Blind Cap, Matador 992, and a Parker Vacumatic. As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in a BOMO art journal from Budapest, Hungary. So let's see how they write. All right, so today is February 14th, 2020. Let's just readjust here slightly because of an off-camera issue you can't see. So my first pen is a Rexall Monogram. Uh, this is a pen that was made by the Monogram Company for Rexall Drugs back in the day when Rexall was a bigger company. I know it's a lever filler, not a super expensive pen in its day, but its day being the 1920s. You know, we've got probably a gold nib and a pretty decent writer. And look at that nice yellow color that comes out. Uh, kind of the fun of a iron gall ink because this ink is platinum. Classic. Cassis black. No, citrus black. And you can even see on this new line as I start it the difference between the line above it and the current line, or the date indeed. So today being Valentine's Day, we'll do something a little different just to freak everybody out. I had a comment from a viewer asking me how this ink compares to uh, Roar and Klingner Alt Gold Green. So you'll find out here in just a minute because my next pen, a Pelican M800, is full of the stuff. So we'll put them side by side here. I uh, can't tell here. There. I had this horrible glare on the screen. I just realized I don't know what you've been seeing and haven't been seeing. So I tilt the screen slightly and there we go. I like this model. You know, I've seen some neat stuff done. Uh, there's a, actually an Instagrammer I follow who lives in North Dakota, Moda Lisa, who was demonstrating some fun stuff with a M1000. But uh, I don't know, so far I haven't felt brave enough to take the plunge. So this is the Pelican. Oh, yeah. Okay, not seeing a lot of similarities there. Ah, uh, sorry. M800 Broad, and this is Roar and Klingner, Alt Goldgren. This is very definitely a green. I gotta make my hearts fatter, or this isn't gonna work. Mainly to try out an ink that I realized I'd bought last summer and never actually tried. Uh, I inked up my Sailor 1911 ringless, 
with kind of a unique brand of pigmented ink. Definitely better do a fat heart with this pen. Uh, this has a music nib, and this is so not enough room for it. Uh, the ink is a Kala Nostalgia ink. Can I fit it in one line, or am I going to need a new line? Yep, need a new line. Winter Dawn! And as you can see, it goes on really dark, kind of like early morning before the sun comes up, and then it dries to kind of a murky green color, which uh, doesn't seem wintry to me, but hey, what do I know? I live in North Dakota. Maybe somewhere forested, it, that might be a more uh, appropriate winter color. So I thought this next pen, this uh, Mont Blanc 32, would be uh, emptied out and ready for a bath by this time. Because it's my, been my daily writer, and I've been just... Using different pens as daily writers instead of my Lamy 2000. You know, for a while till I get bored with it, and then I'll go back to my Lamy 2000. But uh, I didn't run out this week, mainly, well, for two reasons. One is this has an extra fine nib. But the other reason is I've been, uh, again, I can't write with it yet, because according to my rules, I can't show you writing with this. But I filmed the first impression with this Monte Rosa, and it, it is filled with a blue ink, but I've been writing a lot with this. In fact, this thing's almost empty. Which may tell you, I've been having some fun with it. So hopefully that'll come across when I eventually release its first impression. So the this Mont Blanc has a nice uh, fingernail intarsia type nib. And it writes very well. It may be the only Mont Blanc I own, but it does give uh, a good first impression of the company. Of course, I'm not using a Mont Blanc ink in it. I'm using Lamy Black. And see, this pen makes up for the really fat music nib that I just used. And I apologize if I seem a little off tonight. I worked a full day of teaching, and then I got to do parent-teacher conferences till 9 p.m. So I'm not firing on all cylinders, but I just wanted to get this done before I went to bed, even though it's uh, 10.20. My next pen, a Waterman's 52 Ideal, or is it Ideal 52? I forget. Waterman's Ideal 52. Uh, night, another 1920s pen. A good one to compare to the Rexall monogram. I don't know if this is the best ink to put in it, but it is a diamine ink, and they're usually pretty safe. It is Diamine Smoke on the Water. And I showed you last week what uh, amazing sheen this has. And these are all named after uh, various rock songs. I Some of them I are, don't ring a bell to me. This one does, you know. Smoke on the water, fire in your eyes. So, yeah. 
Purple Rain, which I think I'll be doing soon, is another one that rings a bell. This could easily be a daily writer when we're on the topic of daily writers. This is a sailor. Uh, I want to call it the Silver Fox now, just because it looks cool. And that sounds like a cool name for a pen. Very nice writer. Not a flex pen. Not even a little bit, but a very nice writer. So lacking a model name, we're just going to go with Silver Fox. If you don't like it, tell me what its model number is and I'll call it by that name. Most of my Senator pens need nicknames because I don't know their model numbers and I can't find them anywhere. And I, I know I've been told, oh, why don't you just write to the company? And I know, I know, I know I should do that, but I haven't yet. Uh, this ink, and believe me, this pen can handle it. This is a very rugged pen. This is a Roshizuku Asagao. Which is apparently a very alkaline ink. Very nice color. It Sort of reminds me of Bay State Blue without all the baggage. <laughs> and uh, Senator Cracked Blind Cap is back. Still not, the blind cap is still cracked because it's still full of ink, but uh, I'll be working on that one of these days before it's inked up again. Oh, Senator did not want to start there. And this is Krishna specialty. After dark. which is an Indian ink. And soon, thanks to a few generous viewers, you're going to be seeing some Indian pens. This has been a fun pen, just a busy week, because this pen usually only lasts about a week and then the ink runs out because it's so wet. But uh, this week's been busy enough that it's still all inked up. It's a Match Door 992. And theoretically, it has an extra fine nib in it, but it does, it, I mean, I put any pressure on it at all and zoop! <laughs> so this is Califolio Blue Azure. I think I spelled blue the English way instead of the French way. It's a French ink. Sorry, drew a blank there. I did a video recently where I had a Califolio Baikal ink, and suddenly I'm wondering what pen that was in. Because I recall the whole discussion over what Lake Baikal was, and you know, I drew a blank filming the video, of course, that it's the deepest lake in the freshwater lake in the world, but and it's in Russia, but oh, I just went, Durr! I don't know. So that's what I get for working without a script, I guess. But it apparently wasn't in that pen. And finally, this week's uh, review. It was this week's first impression, wasn't it? That's where I was using the bike haul ink. Oh, and it's empty. The pen is empty. Because I filmed the video before Christmas. <laughs> if you can't tell from the lights behind me in that video. 
All right, so this week's uh, review was this pen. This is a... Um, <laughs> God, I'm tired. <laughs> Damn, I don't even remember what it is. Parker Vacuumatic. Thank you, script. Don't have a script, but I have a list of the pens. The Evernote page. So, Parker Vacuumatic. And the ink in it is Parker Quink. Green. Uh, ODE recently did a video on a different Parker. I want to say it was a Parker Frontier uh, where he had the same ink in it, but it had a definitely a different quality. And I know some of the companies, the shades and the inks don't match from country to country, I suppose due to regional preferences. Um, so I just found that interesting. So I batch filmed the whole, oops, batch filmed a whole bunch of videos, uh, first impressions. I'm working on this weekend, I'm going to batch film a whole bunch of reviews and get ahead on both. So then I can just like film a few here and there and just get ahead slowly because uh, I'm headed into another busy time soon. But uh, I just wanted to mention, I I brought this up last week that I showed you this pen that I've filmed its first impression. It'll be appearing one of these days. Another pen, it's been on a merry adventure. If you follow the uh, the channel, what's it called? The, ch the community tab on the channel. I, I had a picture of me holding this pen because... Okay, story time, and I think you need to see me for this story. So over my shoulder here, there's this lovely plaid couch. I almost never sit at this corner. I just don't care for the light that sits here. I mean, this used to be my favorite light to read under, but now over in that corner, I've got two very lovely LED lights that <laughs> I like their quality of light much better. I do have LED bulbs in this one, but I just don't like it as well. Uh, but for some reason I've been sitting here mainly because the furniture is all 20 years old and my favorite spot is starting to show that it's my favorite spot. So I thought, well, let's migrate for a while and let the cushions decompress after 20 years of me sitting on them. Um, get that image out of your head. <laughs> but anyway, um, it turns out this end of the couch, here's the end of the couch, down here between the, the edge of the sofa cushion and this armrest thingy, uh, you know, you have the gap between the sofa cushion and the armrest on most couches. Well, it turns out there's a black hole in there. There's a big tear. And uh, so I had reviewed this pen, uh, filmed it. You have not seen it, but it will be Mondays because after my adventure with it, I thought, got to do it because who knows if I'll lose it again. And uh, behind me, see if you can see it. If I really lean back, I'm kind of got a wall here, so I can't really go back any further. But right here is a tray sitting on top of my air conditioner because I'm not using the air conditioner because it's, I don't know, zero degrees out right now. I have a whole bunch of uh, pen repair projects. So for some reason, I set, I filmed my first impression of this pen. And what did I do? Set it with the repair projects. So for weeks, I couldn't find it. Uh, and then last week's first impression, I, in answer to some questions, I, I wanted to talk about, well, you know, I do use other pens, and here they are. And, uh, you know, I was trying to show some of the pens that I'm using that just are hibernating for a week, and yes, there's a couple. Uh, and then the, oh yeah, and I also film videos ahead and batch film them, but I keep using the pen, but I can't use it on screen because it's a first impression. I can't show you until first impression, but anyway, babbling because it's tired. And, uh... And I just like, where's my Geha 722? I don't know. So, uh, looked all over for it all weekend. And uh, found it, what day was it? Oh, I found it after I filmed the video. Uh, it was close to bedtime. And I found it in that tray and I'm like oh wow why did I put it here so then I wrote with it and in fairness it started up like a champ so that was awesome 
and wake up Saturday morning. Where's the gay house 722? There's my notebook sitting on, here's the clue, this armrest uh, full of, uh, what's in it, sailor something or other, the wisteria color, purpley one. And where's the pen? I lift up sofa cushions, look there, not there. Look on the floor, around the sofa, look under the sofa. Um, you know, if you saw the rest of this room, it's not perfect, but it's pretty neat. It's hard for a pen to find, and it's very quick to search. No joy. Went all week. Couldn't find it. And I tore the living room apart. I pulled out all the furniture. Uh, I tipped up the couch and, and uh, everything. Nothing. Then I thought, well, maybe I took it to the kitchen. Maybe I took it to the bedroom. You know, who knows? When you're tired, you do weird things. No joy. So last night, which was Thursday. No, today's Thursday because I'm filming this on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, I was feeling around, you know, thinking it's got to be here. And put my hand down between the sofa cushion and the armrest. And there's a hole there. Big hole, big flip, big flipping hole, and uh, long, narrow. I didn't see it in all my pulling the sofa cushion out. Uh, you know, twenty-year-old couch. The fabric is wearing, and it is getting more brittle. So apparently, some stuff gave, and uh, tried to reach my hand down in, but there's a piece of wood in there to make it an armrest, and I couldn't get my hand past it because my hand's too fat, I guess. So ended up flipping up the couch. And using a knife and cutting that little cloth thingy that's under the couch. And yep, there's the pen. And bonus, I found a nib unit. A very uh, old nib unit. So uh, apparently I have a pen somewhere that's missing a nib unit. I just got to figure out which one it is. So uh, yeah, the Geha today got to spend its time you know, in between parents during my conferences correcting freshman physical science tests. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So I'm happy to have it again, and uh, yeah, I am reminded what a great pen it was. So it's it's a good first impression you're going to see on Monday. Uh, my only other exciting news, because it is getting late for me, is uh, I woke up this morning, Thursday morning, and looked at the thermometer before I went out the door, and it said 20. Went out the door, and oh, baby, was it cold. I apparently missed that whole minus in front of it. So for those of you on a more rational temperature system, uh, that would be 29, minus 29 degrees Celsius. So yeah, that was cold. Luckily I was wearing my brand new coat that I bought in my little adventure down the Spearfish. And I had my gloves and my hat in the pocket because I always do that in the winter because you never know how much the weather's going to change. Walked back from conferences tonight at, uh, well, it was like 9.15 or so by the time I got out of the school. But it was... Uh, three degrees Fahrenheit, which I forgot to look up the conversion to Celsius, but darn cold. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I should have known it was cold because my house makes weird thunking noises when it's cold. And, uh, you know, that's what woke me up this morning before my alarm clock went off. So, uh, yeah, it's cold. It's North Dakota. So, anyway, I'm going to draw this to an end. Sometimes these uh, pens in use actually drag on past the time this camera can record but not tonight i really need to get to bed if i'm going to teach tomorrow and i need to have at least two of these cylinders up here running so <laughs> i gotta sleep and uh we'll edit this video together at some point so i want to thank you for watching so if videos like this interest you where i talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points and way too late at night i would invite you to subscribe and, um, how do you like cold weather? I find it kind of refreshing, except when the wind's blowing. Um, but I want my garden. And, uh, have you ever lost a pen? I will tell you a horrible story about my very first fountain pen that I bought as a 10-year-old. I lost it during one of my moves around in North Dakota. So I kept it into probably my 20s, maybe my 30s. No, I was still in my 20s on that move. Uh, when I lost it. Don't know where it went. It's probably in one of the places I lived and if it's the right move that place has been torn down. So uh, 
yeah. So I, I, I always, I hate losing a pen, so that's why it was so annoying to lose this pen. So share your story down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.